Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marchant here with your outlook for the weekend, September 23rd and 24th, 2017. Very, very warm temperatures are going to be with us uh, for this weekend and into early next week. And uh, we're talking about downright hot temperatures as we get to Sunday and Monday especially. Uh, maybe in a Tuesday, but there's some question about how close Maria will be and maybe if we get some clouds streaming in from the southeast uh, with the outside bands of that. But I don't expect any rain in this area. We're just expecting uh, maybe some cirrus clouds to... to uh, give us a partly to mostly cloudy uh, day on on Tuesday especially for southeastern areas and it may limit temperatures we're gonna get into that in this video first this is Jose and it's gonna continue to weaken and then finally it's going to start to dissipate a little bit it's uh, gonna take its time doing that though it's gonna take most of Sunday before it finally uh, gets out of here this is now Sunday evening you still have a closed low there but then overnight it finally disappears and then uh, in the meantime we're just baking here this is now Monday we're looking at uh, we can see uh, uh, we can see Maria moving in from the south here, getting awfully close here to the North Carolina coastline. This is not something we can write off for the for the Outer Banks. As a matter of fact, uh, you may have some tropical storm force winds if this is correct, but uh, getting right to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, so it's something that has to be watched, but uh, for our area, we're not expecting anything, but we will have rip currents all the way up and down our, our beaches here locally, and then, of course, extending all the way down uh, to the south also. Uh, but uh, we have uh, rip current uh, uh, effects, and we also have, you're going to have clouds that are going to be coming in from this direction, uh, coming on shore. So depending on how many cloud, much cloud cover you get on Tuesday may limit the amount of sun you get, and uh, of course that will limit temperatures. If it is not, and it uh, ends up being mostly sunny or at least partly cloudy, uh, you can get temperatures making a run again at 90 degrees for uh, for many areas. But we're going to take this a little bit further now just to show you what this does. It comes, it comes about that close right there to the Outer Banks. And then it starts to drift eastward, and that's because you have a trough. You can see that right here uh, coming in, and that's going to rescue us and save the day. Pick this up and move this almost due east, but a little, we'll call it east-northeast. Uh, and away from uh, away from the uh, land masses, so maybe a graze here for coastal North Carolina. But after, that's all we're expecting right now. If something changes, of course, we'll update that. Take another vantage point of this, and this is looking at uh, just off the southeastern U.S. coastline. You can see Maria here, uh, and it's going to from this point. Uh, it's going to go start going north, maybe a little bit northeast, and then it looks like it's going to come back toward the coastline. Uh, but then it's going to only get to a certain point. How far what northwest is still in question. And the GFS and the European model are handling, handling this differently. Uh, uh, how far west this gets, European model is not quite as west, but its ensembles are. So we're going to allow for uh, for this to be close enough to impact at least the inner, Outer Banks, North Carolina. So if you have vested interest down there, please do pay attention. Uh, but we do expect this to turn out to the east or east-northeast at, at, after this point and not affect our area directly. Again, some clouds. Uh, Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday, until the system pulls away, and then uh, some rip currents, of course, along the beaches is, is what we're looking at. Taking a look at the upper air analysis, looking at the, the GFS ensemble, and I just want to show you what we're dealing with here. This here is the uh, remnants of Jose, and it was thought all week that we'd have uh, we'd have enough of a weakness here uh, in between the two ridges. There's a ridge here, and there's also a ridge out here to the east. It's off the picture. Uh, but in between the ridge, this oh, this weakness created by Jose would allow Maria to go like this and head out to sea. Uh, but we never knew what exactly was going to happen with, uh, with Jose at all, so we had to wait and see how this developed. Now, uh, this weakness is going to disappear, it looks like. And you can see that right here, it disappears. And then you have, of course, the ridge building over the top here, over Arias. So you put a big high right here. But there's also one to the east of it yet, and it's going to eventually link up with that, that uh, ridge that's east of it. So it's going to become like a banana high, is what they call that. And so that when it does that, it's going to affect the path here of uh, where, where Maria, Maria goes. And you can see that's now connected right here. As it's approaching, uh, it's still continuing northward, so it tugs it back toward the coast. You can see that here. It's going back toward the coastline, and, and then it ends up just off the coast. This is too close for comfort here for uh, the Outer Banks, North Carolina, maybe all of eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. Need to pay attention to this. Uh, but it doesn't get too far because like the, uh, like the European model, this ridge is building back toward the Ohio Valley uh, like this, okay? So it can only so since it gets it's going over the top like this and backing out like this, they can't go too far northwest because it's being blocked here also. So 
I don't think it's going to get too far close to the coast. If it does come west, it probably gets about this far here, unless this ridge is not modeled correctly in this position. And then uh, it still stays over the top here, but by that time, a trough is going to come in here and sweep this up, and that's coming in right here. So that's going to pick it up and send it east. We are pretty confident in that part of it, and very confident that we don't have impacts more than I described there uh, for our area. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, might be some subtle changes here with that position of where exactly it is if it's closer to the coast. Obviously, more impacts uh, and further inland, too. Uh, with uh, in, East, in eastern North Carolina, but if not, then it's uh, you know further east. If it ends up being further east, then less impacts or no impacts at all to the eastern uh, coast of North Carolina, especially the Outer Banks. So I would bank on at least uh, paying attention to this just in case because there's a lot of things that can happen with that. Of course, locally our temperatures will be very hot. This is looking at Sunday highs temperatures, and we're, we're looking at temperatures 90, or maybe even the low 90s in some spots. So very hot for this time of year. That continues right into. Uh, right into uh, Monday, so pretty much the same thing here on Monday. Uh, but once we get into Tuesday, you have those clouds starting to stream in, so it may hold back temperatures a little bit. This is probably underdone a little bit. I don't think it gets that cloudy, uh, but stranger things have happened. And of course, it depends on how close this is. Again, you're going to have those streaming clouds coming in from the southeast and how far inland they get. Uh, and how dense of an overcast it is will determine how the temperatures are going to be like on Tuesday. Otherwise, very little clouds, and you're talking about making a run at 90 once again. I'm Eastern PA with a 30 meteorologist, Bobby Marchers. That is our outlook for the weekend, September 23rd and 24th, 2017. Have a great Saturday and Sunday.